Hi guys, okay, so in this um, hopefully short video, um, we want to take um, a characteristic polynomial for like a linear operator or a matrix maybe, a square matrix. Here's the characteristic polynomial, we factorize it. Um, and given this factorization, we can write V as a direct sum of these invariant subspaces. Okay. So the point of this is that um, once we do that, these are all invariant subspaces. That means that matrix of T, we can write it as a block diagonal matrix. And that means we only need to understand um, like how T behaves when it's restricted to this, this like little parts of V. Okay, and that's going to be much easier. Okay, so let's so let's try and prove this um this decomposition. Um, okay, and we're going to do it by induction on k, which is like, like the number of uh, roots of the characteristic polynomial. Okay, so if k equals 1, well, um, the characteristic polynomial is just like z minus lambda to some power. And that means that um, t minus, so in that case, t minus lambda 1 to the m is just going to be 0. And that means that the entirety of v is just the kernel of t minus lambda to the m, because t minus lambda to the m is just 0. The kernel of 0 is all of v. Okay. So when there's just one factor, this is, uh, you know, easy to see. I don't want to say easy, but maybe it's like, um, you know, that's the base case. Okay. So, so the more complicated situation is we're going to assume now that this result is true for whenever, like for some integer k. So whenever we have like k, um, k roots of the characteristic polynomial, we have this theorem. And now let's suppose we're given a characteristic polynomial which has k plus 1 distinct roots. And now we have to prove the theorem, okay, the induction hypothesis and the induction step and so on. Okay, first of all, we want to write the characteristic polynomial as a product of the last term, z minus lambda k plus 1 to the m k plus 1, and all the rest, so the first k things. So we'll call um, the first k factors of the characteristic polynomial, we'll call that f1, and then here's the other factor. And the lemma says that uh, um, the vector space V is the direct sum of the kernel, oh, this should be a T, the kernel of T minus lambda K plus 1 to the M K plus 1 plus kernel of F1 of T. Okay. And, and now our plan is to use induction to prove that the kernel of F1 of T is the direct sum of all these terms, and then kind of we're done, except there's a little hiccup. Okay. So first of all, we put v1 to be the kernel of f1 of t, and we put t1 to be t restricted to v1. Okay, and in particular, um, if I plug in t1 to f1, I get zero, because t1 is just restricted to v1. Right, because any element of v1 um, satisfies f1 of t of v1 equals zero, and the, rate, and the domain of T1 is just V1. So, so if I plug in any V1 into this, I get zero. So F1 of T1 is zero. Okay, now by induction, um, we can write V1 as a direct sum of the kernel of T1 minus lambda 1 to the M1 plus, da, 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 plus T1 minus lambda K to the MK. Okay, and now it seems like we're done. We just plug V1 back into um, this equation for V except for we have this pesky these pesky things here they have to go away before we plug that back in so now we want to show that um, here this should be a 1 we want to show that the kernel of t1 minus lambda i to the mi is just the kernel of t minus lambda i to the mi okay. in other words we want to show that um, the kernel of 
so, so it turns out what we have to do is show that each of these kernels is contained in V1. And once we do that, we'll get this, in, this equality of kernels, and then we can plug back in and get the equation for V, which we want. Okay, so it is clear that, oops, sorry, this should be a T1 again. Sorry about that. So it is clear that T1, the kernel of T1 minus lambda i to the mi is contained in the kernel of t minus lambda i to the mi. That's because t1 is just t restricted to some, to v1. Okay. So like this kernel on the on this side is just the v1s. When I plug it into this, I get zero. And if I if I have a some v1 doing that, well then I plug it into the right hand side, I still get zero because t1 is just a restriction of t. Okay. Right, and, and what, what does it mean? Well it just means like t1 of v1 is just t of v1 for all v1 in v1. So if I have an element of the kernel over here, it lives in this kernel as well. Okay, so now let's take a element of this kernel, kernel of t minus lambda i to the mi, and we want to check, is it an element of v1? If it is, we're okay, because then it's also in this kernel. Okay. So we have an element of the kernel of t minus lambda i to the mi, okay, and we know that we can write it as the direct sum of w plus v1, with w in the kernel of t minus lambda k plus 1 to the m k plus 1 and v1 in the kernel of f1 of t. Okay, but in the proof of the lemma, what we saw is that um, when we write this direct sum, this is the direct, what direct sum are we using? We're using the direct sum that v is the kernel of t minus lambda k plus 1 to the m k plus 1 plus kernel of f1 of t. And when we prove that lemma, we prove that um, when you write v as a sum, um, this w is going to be of the form v of t times f1 of t, or a of t I wrote here. So w is a of t f1 of t of v. Okay, But v is in the kernel of t minus lambda i to the mi, and that is a factor of f1. So f1 of t of v is actually 0. So, so w is 0. So w is 0. That means this v is actually just equal to v1. So v is an element of v1. And um, that tells you that uh, v is actually in v1 intersect the kernel of t minus lambda i to the mi, which is just the definition for the kernel of t1 minus lambda i to the mi. Okay, so that I put a square here, but that's maybe premature. So that tells you that. Um, V1 is the direct sum kernel of t minus lambda 1 to the m1 plus kernel of t minus lambda k to the mk. And um, v is just the direct sum of v1 plus the extra term. And that completes the proof now for real um, by induction. So that completes the induction step. And then by induction, um, the theorem is true no matter how many um, distinct roots a characteristic polynomial has the end. OK, so um, uh, thank you for watching this video. Our next step is to understand um, what happens when we restrict t to this this um this little spot? So what what happens is um, we get to suppose without loss of generality that t satisfies t minus lambda to the m equals zero, okay, and, and we'll talk more about that in the next video. I hope.